Hello friends and welcome to the chapter on the food element. Unlike air and water, food has many kinds and varieties to choose from. When we turn to nutritional counseling for health improvement, we come across experts who are trying to influence our choice of the type of food in which we should nourish our body. The question is, if the recommendations given by these experts are indeed capable of influencing and improving our health, or they just leave us with the status quo of being chronically ill and medicated forever. I think the job of most nutritionists is to please the customer, because most people find it difficult to change their lifestyle and their eating habits. The lean meat, chicken and fish replace the unhealthy red meat. The low fat cheese replace the high fat and the diet drinks replace the ones with sugar. The diet of many vegetarians has also been found to be unbalanced and deficient in essential nutrients. If most people followed God's original diet, I don't think many of us were chronically sick because in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 29, our Creator gave us a precise description of our ideal food. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seeds in it they will be your food. I'm not the one to determine what is the best diet for you. However, my goal is to share basic common knowledge about our digestive system and the best food for us based on the physiology of our digestive system and the fact that we are a biologic creature. From here, the choice of what to eat is completely yours. So let's start with the digestive system. The mammalian family of which we belong is divided into two subfamilies, the herbivores and the carnivores. Although there are mammals that feed on plants and also incorporate a small amount of meat in their diet, and later I will clarify it, in anatomical comparison, we are classified as herbivores and not as carnivores. To prove it, I will give you six crucial facts. Number one, herbivores have molars and carnivores have canines. Number two, herbivores have long convoluted intestines designed for slow digestions of fruits and vegetables that contain cellulose and fiber. In contrast, meat eaters have short intestines, about one third the length of herbivores intestines that was designed for a short stay of food in the digestive system. Number three, our lower jaws and those of other herbivores can move up, down and to the sides to allow chewing and grinding of plants' foods, fiber, and cellulose. On the other hand, carnivores can only move their jaws up and down. They use the power of the jaws to cut and tear the flesh. Number four, human saliva is just as basic as saliva from other herbivores. Our saliva contain ptialine, which is designed to digest plant foods. Digestion begins in the mouth and then the food is ground with the help of the teeth and mixed with saliva containing ptialine, which prepares the food for the next stage of digestion in the stomach. Unlike the saliva of herbivores, the saliva of carnivores is acidic, which allows for faster digestions of food. Number five, the hydrochloric acid in the stomach of carnivores 
is 20 times stronger than in the stomach of herbivores. Rapid digestion of meat and bones and help in the extraction of cholesterol from the body are the reasons for the stomach rich in hydrochloric acid in carnivores. Number six, our kidneys and liver are smaller than those of carnivores. These organs are larger in carnivores to treat and extract the large amount of nitrogen found in their bodies as a result of eating meat. But the most important is the fact that all mammals in the natural environment feed on fresh food. Carnivores feed on fresh meat and herbivores eat their food straight from the tree and the soil. And those omnivores, mammals that eat plants and meat, they also eat their food fresh. And better yet, we cannot survive on meat alone, be it fresh or cooked, but we can certainly survive on fresh plants food. Most people think that the law of nature do not apply to them. They eat cooked, baked and fried food, enzymes free, lifeless food. They glorify chefs who prepare the dishes for the lust of the eyes, the smell and the flavor. This food gives a momentarily pleasure that passes after the end of the meal. But I cannot find how this food helps to maintain health and longevity. Many of my customers were treating the digestive systems as a trash can and ignore all the symptoms of upcoming digestive problem. Our digestive system begins in the mouth. When we chew food, it mixes with saliva, which begins a process of digesting the food. Saliva also balances the acidity of food, so the stomach will have an easier time digesting it. In the stomach, there is hydrochloric acid, which breaks down the food into its basic components. The stomach prepares the food for the important stage of absorption and assimilation, which takes place in the small intestines. Because the stomach is acidic, it is not suitable environment for bacteria, which prefer an alkaline environment. The bacteria are found especially in the intestines. In the small intestine is where the body receives most of the nutrients, which nourish the body's cells. The colon is the last part of the digestive tract. Here, the waste finds itself out of the body. The large intestines host most diseases of the digestive system. Before I continue, I would like to draw a conclusion about omnivores. While there are mammals that eat both plants and meat, we ignore a number of important things about it. First, the amount of meat in the food is relatively small and does not form a major part of the menu. Second, the meat and eggs they eat are eaten fresh without any change. Now, it's very important to understand the basic errors associated with nutrition and health. It is lie in the difference between organic and inorganic elements. There's a note here. This does not refer to organic food bought at the health food stores or food that grown under conventional conditions. So organic elements is found in everything that is living or growing. Inorganic elements are found in inanimate matter, in rocks, in metals, and in the soil of the earth. The United States Pharmacopoeia states that if the element looks the same under a microscope, it remains the same element regardless of whether the element is lifeless or full of life vibration. It doesn't matter if the vitamin C 
comes from the laboratory man-made chemical called ascorbic acid or from a freshly squeezed orange juice. This life energy is in the sunflower seed that becomes a tall and strong plant that develops hundreds of similar seeds. It is the seed of a tree to form a strong mature tree. This life force is also found in our reproductive organs of all animals. Look, life gives life. Every animal in its natural habitat is nourished by organic elements. Carnivores eat fresh meat and herbivores eat fresh plants-based food. Now, plants have a root system and photosynthesis that turns inorganic elements, minerals from the soil, into organic elements that we can digest and absorb. Moreover, in most cases, carnivores eat only herbivores whose body's tissues are made up of plant food as the first source of nutrients. Now, our body is composed of 70% water and 30% organic elements. In order for our body to function in the best way, there is a law in nature that comes to our aid. I'm talking about the law of nutrition. You see, all organic cells, from bacteria and viruses to all animals, are subject to natural laws that are difficult to violate. One of these laws is the law of nutrition, which says, if it's alive, it must be fed to stay alive. And if it's fed, it must be extreme waste. Animals in their natural environment feed on fresh food. In fact, there is no animal which is in its natural environment that feeds on non-fresh food. Food that the enzymes were destroyed by cooking, baking, roasting, etc. But we, humans at the top of the pyramid think that this law does not apply to us and we feed our body with everything that resembles food. So what are enzymes and why they are important to our health? Enzymes act as catalysts in the body of animals and in plants. Today, science is on the verge of discovery that without those enzymes, it is difficult for minerals and vitamins to be absorbed into the body. But those essential enzymes are destroyed at a temperature of about 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius. This discovery will make the synthetic minerals and vitamins sold in health food stores obsolete and take us back to nature, to fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, and herbs, while life energy is still in them. So what are the real reasons for what we eat? There are three reasons for that. Number one, tradition. That's what our moms gave us to eat. That's what we ate at family gathering, parties, and holidays. Number two, the taste of our food. If it didn't taste good to us, we would not eat it. Number three, social acceptability. If we don't eat and drink like the rest of our friends, we might be left alone. So, what is real food? Real food is food that is suitable for the body and contributes to its constructions, health, and balance. This food does not contain harmful toxic chemicals that are not usable by the body, but they stimulate the taste buds. According to the law of nature, under which all animals eat what suits them, real food is defined as an edible food that grows in nature. Food that wasn't processed and altered in a factory. Food that came from nature and contains essential nutrients needed by the body. Survival is why we need food to maintain health and balance. To maintain health, we need food that 
has enzymes, minerals, vitamins, and water. If one of those components is missing, the food is not wholesome food, and it does not satisfy all the nutritional needs of the body. Though the person has no symptoms of disease, the body has a harder time building strong disease-resistant new cells. According to data, experts have determined that 60% of illnesses are caused by missing essential nutrients. When the shortage of essential minerals become chronic, those symptoms were supposed to get the person's attention. But no one suspects that the root of the problem is the food that was robbed of its essential nutrients and it has no enzymes in it. Nature produced food for us in a simple formula to understand and it is inorganic minerals from the soil plus photosynthesis equals organic minerals from plants that provides carbohydrates, proteins, fats and enzymes for us. Animals are unable to perform photosynthesis, so they must rely on plant kingdom to prepare their food. Each plant is packed with nature's made minerals, vitamins and enzymes, which are superior to synthetic lifeless products. Can you compare the value of a cup of freshly squeezed juice loaded with minerals, vitamins, and enzymes to lifeless man-made pills? For more than 20 years now, in the mornings after I exercise, I drink a large cup of fresh juice of different fruits and vegetables. During the years, I owned four juicers. The champion juicer served me for 15 years in my journey in Israel. But when I moved back to the States, I bought a newer technology for better extraction and juice quality. By looking at the best one for you helps continue supporting my educational programs and help me to reach out for more Americans so they can also regain back their health. Thank you very much and God bless. And in the next chapter on the food element, I'm going to reveal the truth about minerals, vitamins, and enzymes. Make sure you are ready to watch this chapter because after you watch it, you can become a health food expert. And I bet you don't want to miss it. So I will see you there shortly. Goodbye.